What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Strength Squad Podcast. I'm your co-host, Steve Cardi. <laughs> and I'm Nick Scopoletti. <laughs> and we're being interrogated in a basement. <laughs> <laughs> at Steve's parents' house. We forgot to do chores. <laughs> we're now in trouble. We are mobile. We are super mobile. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't forget. I'm going to give you this today. Gifts yeah. for everyone. <laughs> give, give me what? Uh, before we start this thing <laughs> off. This, this oh, guy. the mic. The mic. <laughs> All right. Cool, cool. Just so our fans know too, what mic you're gonna have? <laughs> She's like, I'm gonna give this to you. And the audio fans, are like, what the hell is he gonna give what it to him? Fuck. Uh, let's start this thing off with a dad joke. Terrible. What do you think? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> I'm so tired. I don't care. Uh, I have a fear of speed bumps, but I'm slowly getting over them. Oh, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> let's do some quick announcements before we start here, guys. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Head over to that YouTube page, man. Get it. Watch some videos of us doing shit and of our episode. Uh, click the subscribe button so you can watch it all the time and YouTube just feeds you that shit. <laughs> That's good. Go to all of our social media, <laughs> like our good. Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram, follow us to our cars. <laughs> now we're in the same town, so it's easy. So it works again. It's coming to Steve's parents' house. <laughs> right here. Uh, make sure you guys head over to iTunes, Stitcher. Uh, click that subscribe button and leave us a five star review and leave us a review it really helps us out um if you don't want to leave it that's fine honestly we'll probably keep doing the show anyway so <laughs> whatever we don't give a fuck <laughs> uh, and always uh thank you special shout out to um our sponsor plant warrior protein and if you guys are looking to get that good plant protein all up in your the deepness of your by the way we had some sales oh good <laughs> If you're trying to get all that up in you, <laughs> Sorry. head over to plantwarrior.co and use this uh, promo code STRENGTH10 for 10% off of any purchase. Whether you're buying protein or man thongs, whatever you're buying from that site. I don't know if they have those yet, but I heard they're coming. <laughs> they're hemp, made from hemp. <laughs> all right, time to sign them to those DMs. Send some news. This week's send news is uh, actually by our, our guest this week, Tony Gentlecore. Uh, an article called Five Quick Tips to Increasing Your Strength. Um, it's a pretty dope article. He goes over a couple things like uh, deadlifting without shoes. Um, talks about um, creatine, things like that. So head over to the article, check it out. Some good stuff. Five Quick Tips to Increase Your Strength. Um, we're going to list that in the show notes. So we're also going to put that on our Instagram and Facebook this week. And that's from Tony Gentlecore's blog. Our guest this week, y'all. Tony Gentlecore. He's awesome. Good dude. The greatest thing about him is he doesn't have like an aggressive core. He's just got like a very gentle core, you know. So I without, really, I really hope he. Listens. <laughs> I really hope he. Hope he does. That. Hope he hears that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we're gonna get the things started with Tony Gentlecore. Want more of the Strength Squad? You can check out all of our social media on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Also, check us out on YouTube where you can watch all of your favorite Strength Squad videos. Don't forget to leave a five-star review on iTunes and Stitcher. Stitcher? I just met her. We would like to thank our friends at Plant Warrior Protein, official sponsor of the Strength Squad podcast. Plant Warrior plant-based protein is easier on your stomach and contains a complete amino acid profile that helps you grow, maintain, and repair your muscles. It gives you 18 grams of protein per serving, and it's made from a blend of rice, pea, and hemp. Plant Warrior pledges to plant one tree for every item you purchase at their online store. Head over to plantwarrior.co, that's plantwarrior.co, and use the promo code STRENGTH10 to get 10% off of your purchase. That's promo code STRENGTH10 for 10% off of any Plant Warrior purchase. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Strength Squad podcast. I'm your co-host, Steve Cardi. 
And I'm Nick Scopoletti. And we're joined by Tony Gentacore. What's up, Tony? Hello, gentlemen. How are you? Awesome. Doing dude. well. Awesome. Thanks for, uh, thanks for being on the show. We appreciate it. Yeah, I'm ready to go. I just got done deadlifting. Uh, it's just, it's just stimulate my, my thoughts, so I'm, I'm ready to go. Yeah, got the hormones flowing. <laughs> Smashing that protein yogurt like a champ. Yeah. yeah. I know. I should feel like it should be, I should be like, oh, hey, everyone. Like, I'm yeah. not sponsored by this company at all while I'm eating. I was just about to say, come on. I'm going to see you at a booth at the Arnold Classic next year wearing booty shorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> Uh, so just for, um, you know, our audience who don't, doesn't know too much about you, um, give us a little bit about who you are and what you're doing now and, and, you know, why you're such a big deal in the strength and conditioning world. Oh, well, uh, so I'll, I'll give like the, the brief timeline here. Um, so I, I grew up playing a lot of sports, small town, New York, um, uh, fitness has always been a part of my life. Uh, only one in my immediate family who was remotely health conscious, which is really weird. Uh, I don't know where I got it from, and um, was able to play collegiate baseball through college, which then led to me getting a degree in uh, health education, health wellness promotion. Uh, been in the industry since 2002, started as a personal trainer in corporate fitness, commercial fitness, and then in 2007 opened up Cressy Sports Performance with Eric Cressy and Pete Dupuy. Uh, so I think people generally know who, who, who they are. And uh, um, I was with that. I left in 2015, so I was there for eight years. Uh, in the meantime, you know, helping to grow that brand and be an ambassador for that brand, and then also uh, building my own personal brand at the same time with my writing and my website and doing stuff on the side. And then I was fortunate enough to be able to kind of turn the page in 2015 and open up my own facility or studio, I should say, uh, seeing that it's a facility would be a, a big stress. <laughs> Uh, and Nick's, Nick's, Nick's been in it, so. It's, you know what, man? It's, it's, small. it's about the size of this screen that we're looking at right now. That's the size of my facility. Yeah, um, it's small, but it's got everything, man. Yeah. It's well thought out. It's good. It's good. So I now, uh, you know, when I was at Crusty Sports Performance, of course, I worked with a lot of athletes, particularly overhead athletes, baseball players. Um, and now... I work predominantly with general population clients. So uh, the, the community that my studio is in is a pretty affluent community of Boston. And um, so there's a lot of professionals and uh, but a lot of people who, want to, who, who recognize my name via their T Nation readers or men's health readers. Um, and then uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, it, that's more or less my clientele now. Uh, but, I, but I am still working with a, a peppering of athletes. I have... My youngest client athlete now is 14, and then my oldest client, I believe, is 60 somewhere in that in that in that range. And uh, I love it. Like I I I I I routinely tell when I whenever I present, especially to other fitness professionals, that my preference and my um, uh, what I really like doing and what really fulfills me is training with general fitness population, not necessarily professional athletes. And not that that not that I don't do that still or I'm against it, but I definitely like working with uh, general fitness population, and, and I work with them in a semi-private fashion. So with such a, a small space, um, it's a little bit more financially um, uh, beneficial on my end to do semi-private, where I'll be working with two to four people at the same time, but they're all working off their own their own programs, and uh, they're getting after it. They're deadlifting. They're squatting. They're doing pharma carries on the sidewalks. Uh, yeah. You know, it's funny because like my where my studio is is right next door to a, a bake shop that just opened. So like, there'll, be people, <laughs> there'll be people out of the bake shop like with their cupcakes and like the people doing pharma carries like doing like little <laughs> around them. And it's, it's pretty comical. Uh, so, yeah, that's more or less me in a nutshell for the time being. And so with, uh, with lifting, strength and conditioning, all that, like, what was your start? You know, like, how did you get started? I know you said you're an athlete, but even yeah, like, um, before that, really, what was... I, I know I kind of, I, I kind of glossed over it in my intro, like, what, cause I, I really, I truly am as far as my immediate family, uh, am the only one that's really health conscious. And I, I grew up on a, a lumber yard, a lumber mill. Uh, my stepfather owns a lumber business with sawmill and logs and tractors. And, and so I, I mean, I grew up chopping wood every weekend. 
which was the worst. I hated it. <laughs> um, but we had to stay warm in the winter, so that <laughs> so that, <laughs> that was a good incentive. Good yeah, incentive. yeah. Um, and you know, because I played sports, and you know, I, I didn't, I can't, I don't recall like growing up reading a lot of muscle magazines, like Muscle Fitness, and uh, I just kind of instinctively said, you know, I think lifting weights is, would be kind of important to be a better athlete and better baseball player. So I'm, I'm going to start doing that. And of course, you know, I have to give a little nod to watching a lot of Predator and Commando. Growing up. <laughs> you know, I think any, any, any guy or girl my age who grew up in the eighties and then early in the nineties and recognizes that, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger was a big part of a big influence of our, yeah. our fitness uh, journey. Um, and then I would, I, 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 if I also recall my, it was when I was 12, 13, um, when my, I got my first weight set, which is like one of those, those like rickety, um, cement plates that were covered in plastic, uh, with a little small barbell. Um, and then, uh, that, that was put down in the cellar. I started using that and that's, that's more or less how I got started. And then I started lifting weights in my high school and, um, you know, that's, that's, that, that was, that was where it all began. And so competitively were you, was it kind of just like you mentioned, you played baseball. Did yeah. you compete in just baseball? Or did you ever compete in any strength so sports or anything in like high that? School, in high school, ironically, uh, I did, I did do one year of cross country. <laughs> uh, my sophomore year I played I, I ran cross country and it was it was horrible yeah <laughs> uh, I was okay at it I, I honestly I, I didn't suck like I if I remember I was on the JV team and I remember in the in the league championships I think I finished fifth um, so I, I didn't suck at it but it was, I didn't it wasn't fun <laughs> like <laughs> there are many things I could think I'd rather do like you know eating like rotten meat would be better than running 20 minutes straight. So, um, I, I, I did that for one year and I also played basketball. Um, but then baseball was always my passion. And, um, you know, once I, once I hit my junior year, I kind of spent the whole year lifting weights and, uh, just kind of prepping myself for, for the baseball season. Um, but certainly in the summers, because I lived in a very, very rural area, uh, it was riding my bike, it was playing kickball, it was swimming, uh, playing a little bit of tennis, like it, it was definitely a multitude of sports. Um, but competitively, I, I, I've never competed in any strength sports. Um, as much as my my own personal training and a little bit of my coaching philosophy has revolved around barbell lifts and, and more or less the big three, uh, I've never competed in a powerlifting meet. Um, which you know, it's just I'm past the point of really giving a shit about any competitive juices <laughs> I have. Uh, like I, I compete with myself, of course. Like I, I definitely like like aiming for certain numbers to hit, or I want them to improve. But you know, me getting, I, I've, I've never really, it's never really uh, been a nice taste in my mouth to like think about standing in front of a stage, like. Because to me, my worst nightmare would be, okay, I got this, I got this deadlift bar loaded up with all this weight, and I'm gonna try to lift it in front of all these people, and then I fail, and I'd be like, oh well, that that's tough. Like I just don't, I just don't find any. <laughs> that would not be how I'd roll. Um, so yeah, it, but but certainly as far as my coaching philosophy, it, it's revolved around uh, getting people strong. Awesome, awesome. Um, so one of the things that we want to get into is you're pretty well known from T Nation and stuff like that. That's, I mean, that's how I first heard about you. Um, so uh, just get into how you started. It seems like, I mean, your writing, first of all, is hilarious. <laughs> Smart. I try. I try. It's, uh, I mean, it's like you, you give, like I said, you have the balance of like the smart side of things, but it's also funny and like I can actually get through it and read it. Because I'm the type, if it's dry, yeah. uh, chances are I'm going to turn the page and go to the, you know go to the next website or whatever. But how did you get involved with, uh, with writing? With writing? Yeah. Oh man. I, that's a, that's another thing too. Uh, Cause I often joke if my, if my English teacher from when I was a junior senior in high school knew that I was a professional writer. Um, and I say professional writer loosely, like I'm not Stephen King. Uh, but what I, <laughs> right. what I, what I do some semblance of my income is, is getting paid to write for certain publications. But if she, if she knew that I was getting paid to write, uh, I think she probably, I don't know what would happen. <laughs> like, uh, it, it would really surprise her. Um, and, and, and I had no aspirations early in my career to 
think that that was going to become a thing. Um, I just think that it stemmed from certainly, you know, when, when Eric and I finally met in person, we were roommates and, you know, growing, you know, kind of pursuing our careers, like being around him certainly rubbed off a little bit in terms of, because he started writing for Teenage Nation at a very early age. I think he was like 20, 22 or 23 when he was originally published on Teenage Nation. I'm a little older than Eric. And um, so being around him when we lived together was like, oh, you know, I have some things to say and I can I can write coherent sentences and I know the difference between there, there and there and and then and then and stuff like that. Like I can not be an idiot on, the, on what I'm writing. So, um, you know, I, I just started kind of writing for free. Um, my first actual pub- published article was on a now non-existent site called Rugged Mag. And um, that was one that was uh, Eric was was one of the editors, but it was it was the early years of Eric and John Romanello and Joel Marion and uh, a bunch of other people within the forums who are now actually pretty renowned, well known people in the fitness industry. And um, so that was my first foray into writing. And then eventually, I just started submitting stuff to Teen Nation. Uh, first few times, didn't hear a peep. Um, <laughs> And eventually sent something in. I think I think my first article on Teen Nation was a program designed for dummies, and uh, that got published. And that was that was that was a big deal. Like that, I distinctly remember that day when I saw my name on Teen Nation, like that. And that was two thousand five, two thousand six, and that was really really cool. And I mean that never gets old. Like I mean now I'm just kind of like, all right, cool, yeah. Like, but it's still cool. And. Yeah. Um, you know, so that that's really how it started, and then that just kind of evolved into getting a little bit of uh, um, uh, inquiries from like men's health and women's health, and then that kind of bled into me starting my own website and just doing more writing for myself um, and more like you know train of thought type of writing, and then um, and then now it's just yeah, it's it's uh, it, that kind of bled into being asked to come present and travel and speak, and so it's been it's been a cool. Uh, it's been a cool journey for sure. That's awesome, man. Um, one of the things I want to cover, especially today, is that, and this is something I, I've str- struggled with as a trainer a little bit, is dealing with, and this is what I think you're the best at, is dealing with people, you know, you said you love training general population, right? I do too. It's awesome. Like, it's great. And when you can get someone who maybe has never lifted before and they're in their middle ages and they're you know, they can do something they weren't able to do before. And yeah. It gives them more confidence. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. But with training general pop, there's always like, they always got something. There's yeah, something yeah. like, Hey, I sat at a desk for 30 years and I never worked out. Now teach me how to, you know, work out. And I just want you to cover how you deal with, um, you know, giving people the right movement patterns, correctives, all that, all that stuff. But you also get them to lift, and as you said, as we're yeah. trainers, we need to get them to lift. So if you could just go into that. Yeah, that, I mean, I, I, I might just go for a half hour straight right here. <laughs> that's it, man. Uh, we can uh, go, go. <laughs> that that's a it, it's a my my thought on that my thought process on that is a is, is pretty extensive. So I might I might lose my train of thought here. But I mean, first off, go for it. first off, I think our, our jobs as coaches, I mean, really most people need the same shit, right? I don't, I don't think we need to be fancy with our program design or the exercises we use. Like I, I feel like I'm, I am a very, uh, vanilla coach and that's, uh, no, I don't really go out of my way to be, um, uh, popular or um, eye-popping or forward-thinking. I mean, maybe some of the stuff, maybe I'd be characterized as that to some degree, but um, really it's, it's just like the Dan John approach. It's like squat, pull, push, push, pull, squat, hinge, carry, single leg, core. Um, and I think if I'm hitting those categories throughout the course of a week or throughout the course of three training sessions or four or two, whatever it may be, um, Good things are probably going to happen, and uh, and one one quote that I like to use I forgot who I stole it from, but I'm taking full credit for it right now uh, <laughs> is because uh, because inevitably whenever I whenever I do present and I present to a lot of coaches and trainers, 
and I'll spend a day or two talking about this exercise for scapular or a bunch of exercises for shoulder health and how do we improve scapular rotation and how do we clean up someone's deadlifts and we can use these corrections for this and this for that. Um, and there's always like a Q and A at the end and like, which I, which I like, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, but I, I, what I hate is when, when you're, when you're part of a group and you're sitting in front of everyone, there's like five of you and it's like, okay, Q and A time. I'm just like, Oh, I hate this. Um, <laughs> but, but inevitably there's going to be, uh, uh, someone raises their hand and then they'll be like, okay, you, you spent all this time talking about for all this stuff you just talked about. How many, how many sets and reps? should I be doing for this exercise for that for and and my answer is like number one I don't know your clients I don't know who you're training I have no idea my my objective when I speak and when I write is just I'm going to give you this information uh that I think works for me I'm not saying it works for everyone but it works for me it's what's worked well for me it's your job to assimilate it and kind of digest it and let it let it marinate a little bit and figure out what you can use what you can't experiment with it um and then that's, that's, that's job number one. Number two is um, really the ideal set rep scheme is three by 52. So if you can get your clients to train three days a week, 52 weeks out of the year, whatever that means. It, and that could be doing light extensions. It could be doing shitty kettlebell swings. Well, hopefully not shitty kettlebell swings. But um, <laughs> it doesn't have to be like barbell lifts. It could be any. I mean, I don't care. But if you get them to do that um, – good things are going to happen. And a lot of the skills as a, as a coach and in particular working with general pop is yes, you do need to know the X's and O's of program design. You should be able to write a coherent program. That's that makes sense. You should be able to break down progress and regress exercises. Like you should be able to ramp up a deadlift or ramp down a deadlift, depending on someone's ability or, and their skill level. You should be able to modify a squat based on somebody's anatomy and what in their injury history. Like I think that's very valuable skills to have as a coach. But really, I think where a lot of coaches lack are the soft skills of coaching. Um, and you you hit the nail on the head because like with with general population clients and, and athletes too. I mean, we're dealing with people. Um, people have different backgrounds, different. Uh, um, skill sets, different goals, um, and you know as well as I do, that you're going you're gonna to get some people who haven't trained in 20 years, but they think they're still in, in college, that they're, they're, they're still this athlete that's worked, and they, they want to do the same stuff that they were doing 15, 20 years ago today, uh, and my job is to be like, nope, not, uh, not going to happen, <laughs> but, um, but I, need to, I still need to find a training effect, and I still need to find... Um, where their point A is like they, most people know what they want their point B to be. That's their goals. Like that. I want to be able to lift this much weight. I want to be able to look, I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to be able to look good at my reunion, whatever it may be. I want my shoulder to feel better. That's point B. My job as the coach is to figure out point A. Uh, and that's where that initial assessment comes in. Um, and I'm even actually having a little bit of a train of thought from even using the term assessment because I do feel um, it has a negative connotation for a lot of people. Like if you, if someone reaches out to you via your website or social media and they, and you say, yeah, we got to set you up for an assessment. Uh, you know, what's the connotation that gives? I mean, they immediately, most people are going to immediately go start thinking, oh boy, they're going to spend an hour just like giving me a laundry list of all the shit I suck at. Like you I'm in, you have an instantly rotated shoulder, you have forward head posture, you you know, you, 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 you lack hip internal rotation. Like you can't extend your hip. You can't like, there's all the, there's like this huge laundry list of like, of what trainers we've been programmed that we need to do in order to like, we have to tell people like how dysfunctional they are and how broken they are and that, okay, now you're going to buy this 24 pack and I'm going to fix you because of all, <laughs> all this stuff. Um, yeah. and don't get me wrong like that. That's part of the deal. Um, but I'm more, I'm more uh, in line with okay. Let's not even making it a, that big of a deal. Because if someone comes in and they're and they don't have a lengthy injury history and they're not currently in pain, I still might see all these little things that I that come up as red flags in my eyes. But I'm not going to highlight them or really make it a thing um, to them. I just I want to see how they move and I, I want to load them. And I want to I want to look at what their squat looks like. I want to see what their hip hinge looks like. You know, I don't want to have them lying on a table for 30 minutes and be like, okay, well, let's do this and look at that. And um, it's just 
Um, I just don't feel like when the, the, the whole term assessment gets, a, it, it just, it just sets off a negative vibe in the, for a lot of people. So what I would rather say is, um, and this is something I, I stole from Doug Sterling, a really good quote up in Maine, um, but a success session. So instead of saying, hey, I'm gonna, we're going to assess you, we're, I, I'm, I'm going to see what I can do to set you up with as much, much success as possible in, in session one, show you what you can do well, um, that, that's pain-free or allows you to feel a, a muscle more or whatever, um, and that to me is going to be a lot more valuable moving forward than me being nitpicky and writing down like every little minuscule little thing that might not be uh, like might not be perfect according to this grid system that we we're supposing that everyone's supposed to be perfect on, which doesn't exist. Like we're not we're not meant to be symmetrical. We're not the perfect posture doesn't exist. Um, so I just try not to make it a thing. Um, and I have to also give credit to, to Brett Contreras cause he did a really good, um, at this most recent fitness summit in Kansas city, he spent his first, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes of his presentation, basically kind of talking to this point saying like, he doesn't even remember the last time he used the word dysfunction in a training session, if at all. Uh, yeah. He's like, yeah, you know, someone might not have a, a bit great shoulder flexion and be able to put their arms overhead, and someone might not have, uh, you know, be able to squat very deep or whatever. And he's like, all right, that's cool. A lot of people can't do that, so we're gonna do this, and let's do that. And right. you know, that, that to me is just a very wise way of approaching uh, working with new people. And that, that's what I mean by the soft skills of coaching. Um, you need, you definitely need to know the X's and O's of technique and program design, but also, you know, being able to have a little bit of feel, um, when you be a, be a human being, yeah, when you're working with a bunch <laughs> of different people from different backgrounds. And, um, so that, that's kind of more or less a condensed version of my thought process when it comes to training general population class. I think I answered your question. No, you um, did. You did. Um, yeah. Certainly, ask away more. Like, if you need me to live. Oh, I more. got, I got more because everything that you're bringing up. So, like, I just started about a week ago. Brand new Equinox open to Connecticut. So we are doing assessments. Yeah, yeah. Done, like, done thirty in the last week. I mean, yeah. like, you take them through the FMS, and what I'm starting to realize is, is that some people want to know what they have pain. Like, tell me what's wrong with me. Sure. Tell me what I got to do. Whatever. But there's some people that are already intimidated. They're in a gym. Yeah. They've never been in the gym. It's super nice. They see people that are in great shape and now they're going, you know, then you put them through a hurdle step. They kick the hurdle over. They think it's embarrassing. That's happened a handful of times and stuff like that. Idiot. Oh, Why? You can't believe you just did that. <laughs> <laughs> they usually go, I'm so sorry. I'm like, it's not, don't, who cares? It doesn't, doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> like, um, there's professional the athletes that do that too. So, Please, yeah, don't. Yeah, like, <laughs> Deion Sanders couldn't touch his fucking toes. Like, no one cares. He's a great athlete. Um, but one of the things I want to talk about, because I, I think you and I are similar in this way, and I know I am. I'm super boring as well. I like the strength stuff. I'm yeah. super vanilla and boring. Now, as far as, like, keeping it interesting for some clients, because some people are like, oh, we have to do four, like, four sets of this? Or five yeah, yeah. sets? It's the same exercises? And like they get kind of like, eh, how do you keep it interesting for your clients? So I might don't get me wrong. Like I, I really I think uh, it, I want them to do what I want them. To. They're hiring me for a reason. So I, I am the expert. So right. I'm having the conversation of what their goals are. And we're, OK, we're going to I you're hiring me to get you to that goal in the most time efficient, safe way possible. All right. And we're going to do that. Like you're going to learn how to deadlift well, you're going to learn how to squat well, and you're going to work your ass off. And, that, and the fact that you're going to be working your ass off is probably going to get you to that goal. However, um, we also have to realize as trainers and coaches that we, they are hiring us for a service, um, and there is a little bit of give and take. Um, so sometimes we, I, 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 I will relent. And I will give them a little bit of what they want, but at the end of a session. So one little trick that I use is like I write programs, so they they, they everyone has their sheet and they know what they're doing for that day, and it's like boom, here's what we're doing. Um, but at the end, it might say something like, uh, "I'm stupid," so I'm calling myself stupid. But I'll say something like, uh, "Last thing will be like five minutes of the donk and donk training." Right. <laughs> so if I if I have a woman client and I I haven't met many women who don't like to work on their glutes, 
Uh, so I might say at the end of a session, we have five to ten minutes, and we're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna just have like a badonka nung palooza, and we're gonna get after it, and we're gonna do what you want to do. And if it's guys, some guys want to do that, but then most guys probably want to do a little like gun show or something like that. So like, yeah. hey, we're gonna we're gonna do some like you know mechanical advantage bicep curl drop sets. Like you know, I'll definitely toss in some like flavor <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. um but but yeah like i it certainly I, I again like i do think the basics matter uh, and when it comes to that point as far as like trying to like you know spice people's training sessions up like i i i'll, I'll also have a conversation like you know do you want to get results or do you want to be entertained um and I'll, I'll have i'll be blunt with people like that and i don't think that's a very uh, insulting way of putting it. It's like, do you want do you want results or do you want to just be entertained for an hour? Um, and usually, when I say it that like that, they they get it. They're gonna be like, okay, let let's yeah. let's get to work. So, but at the same time, it is a person. I'm a person, and I, I like to have fun too. Like I'm not I don't consider myself a serious guy. So if I have to at my studio, if I have to put on Metallica for five minutes so Kevin can do his bicep curls, then fuck it. I'm going to do it. Like, I'll, I'll, like <laughs> why not? Yeah. So, um, that, that's a little bit of my, um, uh, thought process when it comes to like, you know, throwing a little bit of fun for our clients. Like, you know, we're, we're here to get results, but at the same time, um, you know, I'm more than fine with giving them a little bit of, of a, of a rope to do a little bit of what they want to. Right. I've been there as well. A lot of people with some assessments and things are like, can I just learn the machines? And I was like, we can do that. Yeah. yeah, but just for this part, just like first, give me the first like 30 yeah. to 45 minutes. And sometimes and what I've done, um, in particular, I remember when I was at Krusty Sports Performance and I, I started with a, with a women's only group for, for a while. Um, and, you know, it's very rare, especially when I was at CSP and, and even now, it's very rare that somebody comes in and, and, and don't doesn't realize what they're getting themselves into. Like they, they kind of are, they know that, okay, Tony's into deadlifts, we're probably going to be deadlifting. Like, they kind of know that. Yeah. Um, but sometimes, like, yeah, I will, like, for instance, I, I had a, a woman email me today uh, asking, she bought an assessment for her husband via my website uh, for Father's Day, and they they have no, I don't even know how they got a hold of me, I just assumed they, they looked up Boston Trainer, like, cause I didn't get the sense that they knew, like, who you were. And yeah, because so even she, she was like, oh, can you, like, write something off that says what I got for him and who you are and stuff like that. So I was like, yeah, let's do, here you go. Um, yeah. I guarantee, um, I might have a, have to have a conversation with him and be like, I mean, I don't know, but it, it has happened in the past where, listen, give me, give me 60 days, right? Do what I tell you to do for 60 days. Like be consistent, yeah. work hard and let's see what happens. And, at, right. and if after 60 days you, you aren't happy or you feel like you're not getting where you're going to be, like, then we can re, we can reevaluate and yeah, I'll show you the machines. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. but usually, if, again, if you, if you, if you put it like that and get it, put a little bit of the onus on them, like, Hey, you're going to, you're, you're my partner here. Like you're going to, you, like, I know how to write good programs and how to coach you, but you got to, you got to put the work in. Um, you know, I think, uh, I think some good, it's just building a little bit of a trust yeah. Uh, and I think, uh, I think that bodes well for, um, for most people. Love it. Love it. I got one more question I really want to ask is yeah, yeah. I brought it up previously. Um, you know, dealing with people that, and I know this from personal experience, I'm dealing with like, I can't deal it from the floor anymore. It yeah. pisses me off. Right now. How do you deal with telling clients that are like, well, you know, when I was uh, 10 years ago, I used to be able to do a hundred pushups or I used to bench press 315 and uh, yeah. now I can't, how come we're not doing any bench pressing or, or my favorite is when you put carries, chops, lifts, crawls in their program, they say, why aren't we doing any abs or sit-ups? Yeah, yeah. How, how do you approach it? Cause again, we're all humans and like, they're not the expert. You're the expert on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. How do you how do you phrase it to them without like being like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about? Yeah, when it comes, I mean, that that takes a little bit of uh, finessing too. Yeah. Um, you know, I might like to your first example where you're like, well, you know, ten years ago I used to do this. You know, using that as an example. You know, I might try to be a little bit witty and be like, oh, let me go out back and get my DeLorean. 
and we'll go back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'll, I'll do, I'll say something like that just to kind of break the ice, and then I'll have an honest conversation with them. Be like, dude, it's not ten years ago. Like, you know, it, like you're like if this hurts, if that hurts, like if, like we're gonna get you a training effect. Like we're gonna if hopefully we'll get you back to that point. But at this stage. Uh, we're just not quite there yet. <laughs> and I, I, I bet Dan John has some like sage advice on that. I'm, I'm sure he's written on this before. Um, but I would just, that's how I would approach that. Um, and as far as like the, the core training stuff, you know, it, there is, a, it is, it is our jobs as coaches to educate. So, um, you know, I, I might have to go in a little bit of detail, on, like, you know, functional anatomy, but like these, these are your abs and like your rectus abdominis, your external internal obliques, your TA, like this is what they're, they're, they're designed to do. And this is how the best way to train them. And, um, and then sometimes I'll just say like, well, um, we're, we're going to try to do, I'm going to coach you up as best I can. So you actually feel, uh, yeah. where you're supposed to feel the exercise. And I think a lot of times where like, cause I mean, bear crawls, for example, um, people are really bad at doing them <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it, they probably had a bunch of trainers beforehand where it's like, oh, we did crawls and I, we never, that wasn't, I never felt anything. And it's like, well, I know you're going to coach them well on how to do a bear crawl well. Uh, and they're, they're going to feel their abs. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think they're, they, you know, we do have to educate um, and I think there's definitely a way of doing that without coming across like an uppy douche and, uh, you know, and, and not being the, oh, well, well, I'm the trainer. Like, you don't know where you're like, I mean, that's obviously not the, the right approach, yeah, not the way to go about it. But I think if you do like say, I mean, you can break it down in, in ways that isn't talking over their head and be like, you know, yeah, you're like the abs, like they're, this is the main action of our abs is anti, uh, anti rotation and rotary stability. And, you know, this is what we're going to try to do. And that's going to help you like transfer force better and like, be able to lift more weight and, you know, it, sometimes it isn't really about like gassing you. It's about doing stuff well. Yeah. Um, um, so I think if you just have those kind of conversations, like most people will get on board with it. Awesome. Awesome. Steve, do you have anything that you want to add? I, uh, yeah, no, I yes. mean, we, we just about covered it. Um, we're kind of, we're coming up to our, our time of it here. This guy's got to go be a dad, but, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and after we, <clears throat> Um, no, but yeah, we, we still have a few minutes. Like if you guys have other stuff, well, I just kind of want to leave a little window. Go ahead. Talk about, um, a kind of the best place for people to find you as far as like yep. maybe social media or even beyond social media and kind of talk about, um, you know, some of the resources you have on like your website and things like that. Yeah. Uh, home base for me would just be my, my website, Tony And that is where I blog and, uh, all, all my social media is on there. And, um, that'd be the easiest way to, to find me. Um, I'll be going through it. I just had a, a talk on my web guy yesterday. So that's gonna, my website's going to have like this massive overhaul at some point this year. Um, so that I'm looking forward to that. But, but in the meantime, it's, that's everything. Articles, podcasts, um, blog posts, social media, everything's on there. Um, as far as any like major projects or products and stuff like that, um, complete shoulder hip blueprints, probably number one, as far as, uh, myself and Dean Somerset, we, we, we released that. What was it last fall, two falls ago. Um, and we're now currently in the throes of building a, a 2.0 version of that, which will start, uh, this fall. We'll, we'll be traveling around the uh, North America and we'll be doing a, a cameo appearance in Slovenia and, um, October, which is going to be, you know, September, which is going to be awesome. And, uh, you know, then I got another project in the, in the wings I'm doing with Brian Cron. Um, let me know if this acronym is a good acronym. So I'm 41. Brian's, I believe 41 as well. And we're going to write, uh, a training program geared to 40 plus lifters. And so I, I said, Oh, we should call it strong mofo with the mofo standing for man over 40. So I think that's, uh, <laughs> oh, that's brilliant, dude. That's I think yeah, that's, I like that. Yeah. But then I'm also, which, and, and I, it wasn't lost on me when I came up with the title. I was like, okay, well, what about women who want to do it? Because we did do a guinea pig group where we had 50 people. We took 50 people through a four-month program of it. And it was 50-50 it was as far as like men and women who were doing it. Um, so I don't know if that title will would, would be off-putting to – uh, any women who would want to do the program, but, um, I don't know, maybe I can think of another way of in, 
of, of the acronym. I don't know, but but either way, he and I are going to be uh, working on that at some point this year, and hopefully we're releasing that next year, um, which I think would be cool because I think that's a, a market that um, there's a market there for um, for for good training for the four. I mean, and, and I, I approach in the sense like, okay, you're 40, you're not you're not 25 anymore, but you can still get after it. You just got to be just got to be a little bit more smart. Uh, and a little bit more efficient with your training because obviously time is, a, is of the essence and you don't have two hours a day to train. So let's try to be very efficient with our time and get after it and but still be able to move well and feel good um, and get a little bit of that meathead stuff in there. So um, that will be that will be coming out at some point next year, I hope. So I got a few things in the wings that I that I hope will be a hit in the industry. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, yeah, that's that's about it, really. Nice. I love the name personally, so I think you go after. Well, thank you. I thought it was pretty. I gave myself a pat on the back for that. Yeah. So. Definitely. <laughs> see how it goes. And I bought the domain name for it, so it's my domain name. So. All right, well, then you got it. Then you're good. <laughs> the the decision's been made. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, uh, Tony. Thanks so much for joining us, man. Uh, yeah. Gonna take, it. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we'll wrap it up. Want more of the Strength Squad? You can check out all of our social media on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Also, check us out on YouTube where you can watch all of your favorite Strength Squad videos. Don't forget to leave a five-star review on iTunes and Stitcher. Stitcher? I just met her. We would like to thank our friends at Plant Warrior Protein, official sponsor of the Strength Squad podcast. Plant Warrior plant-based protein is easier on your stomach and contains a complete amino acid profile that helps you grow, maintain, and repair your muscles. It gives you 18 grams of protein per serving, and it's made from a blend of rice, pea, and hemp. Plant Warrior pledges to plant one tree for every item you purchase at their online store. Head over to plantwarrior.co, that's plantwarrior.co, and use the promo code STRENGTH10 to get 10% off of your purchase. That's promo code STRENGTH10 for 10% off of any Plant Warrior purchase. All right, crew, welcome back. Uh, Before we wrap up here, we're going to close with a segment we call Winners and Losers of the Week. (laughs) So our Winners and Losers of the Week, uh, I'll start with mine, then we'll go with you. Sound good? Go ahead. Uh, My winner this week is a guy named Rodney Smith. So if you haven't heard of Rodney Smith already, Rodney Smith is a dope dude. Apparently he's a landscaper. Um, he's a Bermuda native and what he's doing is he's about to take a trip around the U.S. and go to all 50 states and start mowing lawns for those in need. So senior citizens, people with disabilities, things like that. So Rodney Smith, you are dope. You are my winner of the week. My loser of the week, which he was kind of a loser to begin with, but then ended up a winner. I'll explain. (laughs) So a guy by the name of Eric Abreu. Abramovitz, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, Abramovitz, a kid from Canada, two years ago, was applying to colleges, right? He is, I think, like a clarinet player or something like that, Um, was in band, whatever, and he was looking to apply to, (laughs) looking to apply to, like, this super (laughs) prestigious school, I'm not going to go into names, it's just, like, uh, it's, like, irrelevant, but it was basically looking to go to this, like, super prestigious school McGill University. with this, like, super dope instructor who's, like, legendary composer, whatever, and his girlfriend didn't want him to live far away, so he applied when this professor sent him an email saying, hey, you've been accepted, you got in, his girlfriend found the email before him, deleted it. No, replied to the professor first and said, posing as this dude, said, I'm posing not, as her boyfriend, posing as Eric, said, I'm good. I don't need that shit. Uh, I'm, I'm not coming. I reject. Deleted the email, then composed a fake, uh, she composed a fake email to this kid as the professor saying, oh, sorry, you've been rejected. So two years later... This fucking kid finds out that his girlfriend did that, so now he's suing her, and I think he won. He won like two hundred sixty thousand or something like that. Solid. Which he should. <laughs> but still, man, bitches be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and those are my winners and losers of the week. All right. Get into it, bro. It's up to me. What you got? All right, my winners of the week or winner is me, because Express is having. 60% off sale, and I'm about to go buy some jeans. <laughs> I feel like they're always having a 60% off sale. Dude, there's literally a list of like all the companies that are having like 
Like Gap has forty percent. Free People's got seventy percent. Are they? Yeah. yeah. There's like a whole list. Because well, I was gonna say, I feel like Express is always there's always some sort of Buy forty or sixty. One. Yeah, there's something. And I feel like that's their business model, though. You know, like <laughs> they're like, all right, these are gonna be the prices. We're gonna list them as higher, but then we're gonna say we're having a sale to list them as the prices we originally said we're gonna sell them for, just to make it look like. Oh, we're having a sale, so you should come in and get this shit, right? Yeah, that could always, fucking be. They always, I mean, they yeah, because they're not gonna lose money, so they do a certain way. True. I don't know. I'm not a businessman. Either way. Uh, and my losers of the week. Um, so kind of preface this story. A little controversial, I guess, but not really. So, um, Kylie Jenner, Kate, whatever. One one of the Jenners. Uh, posted on Instagram like a happy Father's Day thing to their dad, Bruce, who is now Caitlin. Posted an old photo of them as kids with their dad. People went insane. <laughs> <laughs> and basically were like, they don't respect him as, as he is now as a woman. Like, they posted an old photo. Why didn't they post a recent photo? And it's like... <sighs> the losers are all these people that comment like, shut the fuck up. I guarantee you, first of all, it's her dad. She can do whatever the fuck she wants. <laughs> Second of all, I guarantee Caitlin doesn't give a shit mm. and is just happy that his daughters are a part of his life. Well, I just feel like either way, like, especially in the case of the pictures, like, they're old photos. Like, they still, they ha- that happened. You it's know? still their dad. It, it It is or was their dad at that point. So it's, it's like. Still, it's yes. <laughs> All right, yes. He changed. I get it. I understand. It's a lot. Still your fucking parent. It's <laughs> You literally came, <laughs> came from him. That's your dad. <coughs> post, yeah, that's whatever, post whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. That's like, weird. You just forget your whole life with your with your father because he changed or changed genders, whatever it is. And you're just like, eh. Uh, like, none of that happened. It's new it's like now. If, if you stop doing the show, because I changed genders. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that's some pretty much the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly the same. <laughs> All right, guys, that is gonna wrap it up for us this week. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed Tony Gentlecore, uh, or when he gets mad, Tony Aggressive Core. <laughs> Had to go again. <laughs> uh, twice. Got you uh, twice. Thank you all the listeners. We love you guys. Thanks for all your likes, uh, all your listens, all your reviews. Keep those things coming. We love to hear from you guys. Uh, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we're like, that was pretty fucking stupid. But either way, just keep it coming. Either way, we're usually pretty receptive. So please stop. Thank you, guys. We love you. We will see you next episode. Deuces. Bye.